the Lost Odds told me years ago, if you want your athletes to know something and believe something, uh, you've got to tell them often. So we talk about that two or three times a week, the last three weeks of the season. Is that easier said than done, though? So Pardon me? Is that easier said than done? Don't try to be oh, for easy. sure. You know, do you have little tricks, too, besides tell them? Just uh, just, you just use electrodes on them? Electrodes. <laughs> no, you just, it's, <laughs> is this your phone? No, it's his. He's recording. Oh, sorry. <laughs> So his fingers are tired. <laughs> All right, so I've answered the first eight questions. Excuse me? Uh, well, let's get the virus thing out of the way. Since we know we have, uh, as far as I know, I do not have it. Uh, you've been tested? No. Yeah. But the American way is it won't happen to me. That's a good thing and a bad thing. Right. Um, you worried about cancellation of events like championships? I'm not worried about that. I know that's a possibility. Yeah. I know the Ivy League just canceled their conference basketball tournament, and South by Southwest was canceled. So it's. We're we're into an era now where overprotection is what we do, and we've got to do it that way. Especially something like this. So, are your swimmers and divers worried? How do you how do you lay that? We've we've talked about it. You know, to, have you ever told anyone not to worry? You know how well that works. So we just, if they cancel anything, we don't know what we do, do about it. We may have a meet in our own pool because we've got a very good team and we haven't reaped the rewards of a hard training. We haven't tried to go all out. And we're trying to go all out in, what, 15 days. So we would like that opportunity. If it doesn't come, we may have to invent something that we just do on our own. It's real difficult to go a whole season and not see how much better you've gotten. Because for swimmers, that's pretty much the main thing. Everybody would like to win. There's one winner per race. But that doesn't mean you can't be successful. So going faster every year is successful. With the winning teams, you're looking at um, a team title in five different decades now. Do you give yourself I think all that means is I'm old. Um, I, I'm still in the sport because I love the sport. I love what it makes them do. They go to college. They go to class. They, I get to see them 20 hours a week, and they work real hard. And they learn a lot of disciplines that will take them further in life. And uh, almost every swimmer I know has gone on to be very, very successful. And they used to come to me and say, I'm not going to have my children swim because it's too hard. And that has turned around. I used to tell them, don't for one minute think that you could get as far as you've gotten without what you've learned in swimming. And then, of course, the other one is, that just means you don't love your kids as much as your parents loved you. <laughs> That's a guilt thing, only. They like, yeah, I, the, uh, we call that subtle guilt. Yeah. 
Uh, I'm sorry, ask your question. No, I went off on, I, I'm known as the tangent man at clinics. I can get so far away I'll be in another room. My swimmers always say, I want to be on the same page as you're on. I say, you're not even in my book. All I know of is what you've heard. They've said, first I heard it could be canceled. Then I heard it could be moved back, but it can't be moved out of 2020. I don't know if the Greeks wrote that in there whenever they started them, but we can't go out of 2020. And that, yeah. that affects a lot of people. But nobody's slowing down. Yeah. Everybody's planning on it. Always. I'm an eternal optimist. And would it affect preparation of trials, the, the unknown, the exam entirety? No, you, in 1980, we didn't go. Right. And we still had a trials and picked a team. But they canceled the Olympics. It's a possibility they'd cancel the trials because mm -hmm. people come from all over the country. Right. Right. I don't. That's, what's that old, old saying, above my pay grade? What do you particularly like about some of the swims you've seen from Maxine Rivers and Vicky? Say that one more time. <clears throat> this here is totally deaf. I'm just on the wrong side. What do you like about some of the swims that you've seen from Maxine Reeves? Maxine came to school here, and when he first started practicing, he would shake hands or bump fists at the end of practice with everybody on the team. And he still does a lot of that. And his swims, in other words, he's going all out for the team. He does the same thing in his swims. He swims, uh, he's top three or four in the 100 fly, going into the NCAAs. He doesn't breathe the last 25. And there's probably two other guys that'll do it that way. He's just very tough, very determined. Just the impact he's had on the team has been special. This, this group this year, everybody talks about culture now. Ten years ago, it used to be team chemistry. And in ten years, it's going to be how much do they care about each other. And when he came in, we, we have upgraded we have got a culture that is second to none. They take care of themselves. They take care of each other. They do a real good job. How about your other transfers? Can you speak about them? And how they, um, they've come along, Alvin and Chris? Alvin Jang and Chris Staka. Uh, Alvin came from University of North Carolina. And their coach... Uh, retired, and they brought a new coach in. And he's from Dallas, and um, when you watch him swim, he sw he looks like it's effortless, and the people that make it look that way, it takes the most out of them to be, very simply, that pretty in the water. Christaka is a verbal and physical dynamo. He, is, uh, he has been a real plus. His coach changed, so that's part of his reason for moving. 
And he's just so strong, so fast. And in any sport, it's the name of the game, speed. I like to say, instead of speed win, speed causes losses for the other people. It's, if you could take a 4-5 football guy, get him to 4-3, It'd be a night and day difference. And that's my goal. Never had a goal to be an Olympic coach. Never had a goal to win an NCAA. I've had a passion to get people to help me make them better or faster. And when I quit doing that, and when they quit laughing at my jokes, which you guys know that'll never happen. But when that, those two things happen, I'll be gone before anybody wants me to go. Did, did you recruit Alvin and Chris uh, high school? Uh, I did not. Okay. <clears throat> so they weren't sore that you they still came in or anything? They, I, I'm a, kicking myself for not recruiting them. Yeah. But if I were to go through the list that I missed out on, it will, I would not be a happy soul. Because these swimmers are late maturers. In football, they recruit the early maturers because they're bigger, stronger, faster. And swimmers, most swimmers would be better ages 23 to 27 for their college career than at 18 to 22. Not really. I just ask, I just, if I haven't seen them swim, yeah. I ask the mom, I listen for the word pretty. That you've seen a runner yeah. who runs beautifully, swimmers do the same thing. And if they do, I know I'm limited on the number of people I can have on my team, but I want a hundred of them. And there are Hundreds every year we miss out on. Hundreds we miss out on. But you've got some pretty good kids. How about that cast of, how did you find him? Casper came in on his recruiting visit. And he had an autograph that I'd signed for him at age 10. But that's the only one of those that's ever paid off. And he still had it, because when I sign autographs, I tell him, I'm going to come to your house in two years, and it better be on the wall somewhere. Now, that's just a threat. I've never done it. But um, so how did you find out about him? Well, he was, he swims, yeah, he's from Portland, Oregon, so he's got dual citizenship. And my assistant coach, Wyatt, went out and saw him swim and sent me a video of him back. And he swims all four strokes well. He's 6'6". You know, he's a late mature, and he's still really, really fast. And um, dad swam at Cal. So we were lucky to get get that one. Yeah, his mom swam, swam too. Uh, you know, I'm pretty sure she did, and um, I don't know where. Is there a chance he'd be on the Netherlands Olympic team? He's got to go certain times, and he's got to meet two weeks after the NCAA's, but he's got to fly to the Netherlands to do that. I almost said Holland. That would show you how old I am. <laughs> but he, Is that, he wants to be there. Though. Oh, he's, he's real close. Yeah. And I have no doubt he'll make it as long as he gets to fly there right. and they have that meet and all this stuff predicated on the Olympics yeah. showing up.
It can be. Yeah. It can be. Um, the best event for him is 100. It won't bother his 100 at all. Yeah. 200, he just, he's really good. And, you know, they say all great athletes know their body. Mm -hmm. I have another saying about that. All great athletes can get away with more than the rest of us. And I don't believe they know their body at all. But if anybody on my team is knowledgeable about what's happening in their body, he's as close as it gets. For a freshman to be able to give you uh, unemotional feedback, like Yesterday, I said, you look great, what do you feel like? Because we get within a week of the meet, never ask them what they feel like. Just doesn't matter. Yeah. So I said, what is it? He said, my stroke feels great. I'm just a little bit tired. So he doesn't do doubles. He just does singles the rest of the way. Now, most of them you can't trust. <laughs> Everybody wants to go singles now. <laughs> Even I want to go singles now. So I don't get up at 4.40 in the morning. Oh, wait, I get up anyway. We have time for one more. Anybody that's been a big surprise that's really come the furthest this season? Oh, well, both Alvin and Chris have been, we've got a team that pretty much after our invite in Minnesota, we had almost everybody we need qualify for the NCAAs. And somebody told me yesterday, I'm not sure I believe this. I know I can look it up. Said we had 24 people qualified. Do you know that? Yeah, that's what Wyatt told me today. For the NCAAs. You can only we're going to take four divers and 16 swimmers. I don't believe anybody has ever had 24 people qualified. That's a credit to them and the culture. We're, we're in an era now, you cannot make them do anything. And I, you know that old saying that you keep your power if you don't abuse it? Nowadays, you keep it if you don't use it. So I try to educate them about the best directions to take in the water, in practice, in the weight room, in the classroom, uh, on their own time. And it's up to them to do it. And this team and the culture has 24 people that's, that's Good that we were this good, but I have to tell eight guys they can't go. I tell the guys, I say, look, I coach for free. I get paid for these decisions, and I hate them. Who's the next most, uh, the most number of swimmers going to the NCAA? I, for, I know there have been a Woman's team or two that's had in the 21 or 22 range. We had 20 guys last year, and um, that was the most men I'd heard of. 20 swimmers, not counting divers. Yeah. How many of those 20 were on last year's team? We, we've got an excellent diving team. Um, You'd have been at conference. Jordan Wendell, first dive off 10 meter, got all 10s. That means he dropped 33 feet and did not splash. Did not splash. Actually, no waves at all. It's what they're doing now is incredible. But we've already got. Three divers, they're at their zone meet right now. We've got three dollar divers qualified. And 
the fourth diver we know will make it for sure. We may qualify five and not get to take one of those guys. No, they just want my job. Um, every year I coach, I get a year closer to retiring. That's a pretty safe statement. I'm into safe.